Satya Nadella became the CEO of Microsoft almost exactly 10 years ago. In that time, the company went from this... Developers, 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 developers... ...to this. Simply put, Microsoft loves OpenAI. From this... ...to this... And from this to this. Microsoft is not only leading the way with artificial intelligence and its integration into everyday products and services, but it is also planning on changing its gaming strategy by bringing its exclusive titles to other platforms such as PS5 and Nintendo Switch. And that actually makes sense, because when we look at the recent results, we see that all the divisions of Microsoft are growing really nicely. Only devices are down by 9%. So getting their games to other devices can be very beneficial. Okay, so let's take a look at the recent results. Revenue is up by 17.6% year over year, Net income is up by 33.2%, cash is down by 50.1%, and debt is up by 7%. So the cash and debt situation does not look perfect. On the other hand, growth is super impressive. But of course, as investors, we should not concentrate on the short-term results, but instead look at the big picture. If you were to invest $1,000 into this company 10 years ago, so when Satya Nadella became a CEO, you could buy around 27 shares. And now they would be worth something close to $10,948. And this company also pays dividends, so in that time you would get $508 as dividends. So if we add together the current value of shares and the dividends, we get $11,456. And that is a gain of 1,045% in 10 years. I think it really shows the importance of the right management, the influence a CEO can have on the entire company. Individual insiders, that is an X, less than 0.1% of the company is owned by individual insiders. So unfortunately, the management does not have its skin in the game. And are individual insiders buying? That is an X. We actually see a lot of sale transactions in the last year. And do super investors own this company? That is a check. There are 31 super investors owning shares of Microsoft. We have, of course, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but also Chase Coleman or Terry Smith. And are super investors buying right now? That is an X. We see almost only sale transactions in the last quarter. So both insiders and super investors are selling a lot of shares at the moment. Return on invested capital, that is a check at 22% 10-year median returns. And we want to see this number higher than 10%, so such a return is really nice. And what do we know about net profit margin? It is a check at 36.3%, and the industry average is 20.3%. So Microsoft has some serious pricing power over most of its competitors. And now let's take a look at share buyback. It is also a check. In the last 10 years, Microsoft bought back 11.5% of its shares. So long-term investors own a bigger part of the company without spending any extra cash. And the debt? it is yet another check. It would take less than a year for Microsoft to pay its long-term debt with a current free cash flow. This company has a very impressive financial health. But is it growing? 
revenue growth that is a check at 10.5% 10 year compound annual growth rate. And we would like to see this number higher than 10%, so they just made it. And free cash flow growth? That is an X at 9.2% in the last 10 years. So it is a little bit below what we like to see, but such growth starts to look impressive if we take into consideration that it is the second biggest company in the world. But let me check that. What is the largest company in the world by market cap? I was wrong. Right now, Microsoft is the biggest company in the world. Well, things change fast. And how is the earnings per share growth looking? That is a check at 14.1% in the last 10 years. For a company of its size, the growth is actually really nice. It is no longer a super fast growing company, but it is far away from being stagnant. The dividend yield is 0.7%, so in the next year shareholders can expect to get $3 per share through dividends. And the payout ratio? That is a check at 25.9%. And we want to see the payout ratio somewhere between 20 and 50%, so that is very healthy. And what about dividend growth? It is a check at 10.2% five-year growth rate. And it is growing every year for 19 years. So pretty soon Microsoft will most probably become a dividend aristocrat. And if you are new to dividend investing, but you would like to learn more, you would like to understand the most important metrics and strategies and avoid typical beginner mistakes, then you can check out my brand new course called Dividend Investing for Beginners. In it, you will learn everything you need to know to get started as a dividend investor. You can of course find 99% of this information for free on the internet, but this course can save you a lot of time because you get all the knowledge in one place. And what is even more important, this knowledge is prepared in a structured way, which makes understanding it much, much simpler. If that sounds interesting, then check it out. The link is in the description. Price to earnings ratio is 37.5. That is very, very high. What it means is that for every dollar this company is earning, we have to pay over $37. Okay, so price to earnings is high, but let's value this company using a discounted cash flow formula. We will have to estimate the growth of Microsoft for the next 10 years and we will make three scenarios of this growth. So in the low scenario, we will estimate a growth of 9% for the first five years and then 8%. In the medium, 11% and then 10% and in the high scenario, 15% and then 12% growth. And why did I choose such growth rates? Well, the global software market is expected to grow at an annual rate of 11.7% till 2032. So the low scenario predicts that Microsoft will grow a little bit slower than the market. Medium is predicting that it will do just as well as its competitors. And the high one shows a story in which Microsoft even though it is the biggest company in the world, is actually growing faster than the market. So with such estimates, the intrinsic value in the low scenario is 160, in the medium $186, and in the high scenario $234. But we have to always apply a margin of safety to those prices. I use a 30% one. And with such a margin, we get in the low scenario $112, in the medium $130, and in the high one $164. And the current price is around $414. It is all in the red. 
So not only the PE ratio suggests that Microsoft is expensive, but also our discounted cash flow valuation. And that would explain the behavior of super investors and insiders, because they are selling a lot of shares. So we have a great company here. Financial health, growth, dividends, everything is fine. And on top of that, we have Satya Nadella, who is exceptional, and he rebuilt an exceptional company. But it seems that the market is expecting even greater things in the future. That is why the price is also exceptional. If you enjoyed this video, you may want to check out my analysis of one of the Microsoft's main competitors, Apple. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.